Hi, I'm Lisa Drawer, and I'm the Global Marketing Director. And today I'm going to take you through the top five food trends for 2022. Ed Long was invited to participate in a webinar along with Ganella Bakery and Carry Ingredients. And each of us were able to give our take on where what we think the top five trends are for 2022. So Ed Long has been around for over 107 years, and we're proud to be the world's leading independent flavor company, specializing in the taste of dairy, which is both dairy and dairy free. We're led by our president and CEO, Lorette Rondinay, who's active in the industry and has been a longtime supporter of the Research Chef Chefs Association. Many of you also know Ann Drusius, who will be serving her second term this year on the RCA Board of Directors. Edlong has global R&D centers in Chicago, our headquarters, as well as Ireland and Mexico, with teams that specialize in flavor, applications, sensory, biotransformation, and culinary. In terms of our market data and trends, we curate them from a number of different sources. These range from research tools to syndicated data, trend tracking, store checks, and of course, I think the largest one is sharing insights across our global teams. When we look at what is happening in the industry, certainly uncertainty and volatility continue. And when I like to preface food and beverage trends by a, an understanding of what's happening around us, because these all affect consumers' lifestyles and behaviors. And there's a number of global forces that are impacting our industry right now. When you look across the, the mega trends, you know, you see environmental uncertainty and volatility, not only with our economy, but with the earth. People are concerned about a sustainable future. And they also want to pursue health and happiness. In terms of consumers, 61% of global consumers plan to increase their spending on health in the next 12 months. And that was based on a recent Innova Lifestyle and Attitude survey in 2021. They also are living flexible lives more than ever before. 44% of global consumers are expecting to work at least three days from home during the next 12 months. So these things certainly are affecting the way we live today. Innova Market Insights puts out their top 10 trend predictions every year. And you'll see there's a lot of interconnected themes. And I've circled some of these, which I will be touching on. But you'll see that we've gone from health of the planet to our own health, which influences the different experiences we seek and the expectations we demand from the food we eat to the story the brand tells. So what I'm going to take a look at, I'm going to take you into the top five trends making plant-based the canvas for innovation. So when we look at trend number one, health of the planet is now the top consumer concern. In a recent Innova Lifestyle and Attitude survey, global survey, in 2020, Health of the population was the number one concern, followed by health of the planet. And now that has reversed. You can see health of the planet is now number one concern, and health of the population is number two. So what does this mean for plant-based? Well, we see that plant-based brands are using packaging as a platform to build trust and communicate their strategy toward maintaining a healthy planet. And honestly, compared to conventional foods, Plant-based food production can call out benefits to sustaining a healthy planet. So they're in general, not across the board, but they tend to have fewer greenhouse gas emissions. They have less land use, less air pollution, less toxic chemical production, and less water use. So taking a look at some of these spotlighted brands, we look at the different ways that they communicate this to the consumer. 
Take, for example, field roast, sage and garlic. They have a label that's carbon zero, made by a carbon neutral company. I give Tofurky a lot of credit. They are coming right out and saying, talk to your reps about climate change and give us a call. It's right on the front of their packaging. When you look at Wanda, and this is an alternative beverage milk, they are using an eco score. So you'll see a scale of A to E. And then on the right, Peanut has right on the top of their packaging carbon negative from day one. So this will only continue as the health of the planet is the number one concern and sustainability and how we're protecting the earth. The next big plant-based trend is nutrition. Nutrition is taking center stage in plant-based alternatives and is gonna remain a top consumer driver. The way that it is playing out is in some different aspects from what you'll see on the left to what you see on the right. So the first one is inherent nutrition. So there's no health benefits with Earth, Earth's own naked beyond the inherent nutrition from the ingredients themselves. So they're calling out four simple ingredients. Oat original, less is more. The other way that brands are doing this is they're enhancing nutrition. So in this plant-based applewood smoked ham, you'll see that it's high protein, vegan, and they're calling out the nutritional benefits. So this is aimed at mimicking. The squeaky bean is reaching for similar nutritional value compared to its animal-based counterpart. And on the far right, banana and oat mighty shake is aimed at optimizing. So they're calling out 50% more calcium than cow's milk, and they're reaching for better nutritional value compared to its animal-based counterpart. So they're looking for superior nutrition. So plant-based has definitely got an eye on nutrition, and this is going to provide opportunities as well as challenges as they add functional ingredients to make these um, products better for the consumer. The number three top trend is fermentation derived dairy, and it's been paving the way for innovation. So based on a lifestyle and attitude survey of consumers globally, two in five are more open to new technologies now that they've seen where it's brought plant-based innovation. So when we look in 2021, consumers had their first taste of products produced with precision fermentation when a company called the Urgent Company created Brave Robot Ice Cream which launched in retailers nationwide. It's made with Perfect Days fermented whey protein, which is an animal-free dairy ingredient. The Urgent Company also launched in several other product formats, including Modern Kitchen cream cheese, and most recently an eggless dairy-free instant cake mix called Climate Hero Cake Mix. Their mission is simple, to create next generation sustainable animal-free foods that taste amazing. Perfect Stay Dairy Identical Alt Milk is currently an LTO at two Seattle Starbucks locations. In 2022, so this year, consumers will get to try more fermentation derived products. The Every Company, which you'll see towards the middle, is a fermented egg protein, and they'll be rolling out their first fermented egg proteins in early. 2022, and it'll be launching in pressed juicery smoothies. And then last year, biomass fermentation company Nature's Find received FDA approval to sell its fermentation-derived FY protein in a dairy-free cream cheese. FY protein is a complete protein with all nine amino acids. And then you'll also see oat cocoa is using traditional fermentation. So the, this 
type of technology and innovation is only going to continue into different formats and different types of products. The top four trend is what we call tech to table. And this is comprised of cultivated meat, as well as advances along with cell-based technology. So when consumers were asked globally, they said they believe that cell-based technologies can be the future of the food industry. And this, there, this area is certainly heating up tremendously. As of January 2022, the only nation to pr approve the sale of cultivated meat is Singapore. And that's through Good Meats Cultivated Chicken, which is a subsidiary of Eat Just. In 2022, so this year, at some point, consumers will get their first taste of cultivated meat and seafood products. Several companies, including Upside Foods, Wild Type, and Blue Nalu, have indicated readiness to launch in U.S. restaurants as soon as they've been, as soon as they're given the green light. So you'll see here on the left, a company called Aquacultured Foods has developed the first whole muscle cut sushi, quality sushi alternative using microbial fermentation, which is actually mushroom based seafood. So they're using biomass fermentation plus a proprietary strain of fungi to create sushi. Then you'll see in the middle, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio brings a proven track record as an investor and advisor to Mosa Meat. So he is uh, working tires tirelessly to combat the effects of climate change, and he's investing in Mosa Meat and Alpha Farms to advance the cultivated meat uh, innovation. So this area is definitely on the climb and we're seeing a lot of investments and a lot of money coming into this area because it just it will be the future in terms of sustainability and just where the market is headed. How long these innovations will take is yet to be seen. Then when we look at the top five trend, I like to call it upcycling redefined. So what you're seeing in plant-based is that ingredients that were once considered waste are now being given a new meaning with a renewed focus on saving the planet in the many forms it takes. So when consumers were asked, which actions have you taken to support the environment or social situation in the past 12 months, they replied, number one, they minimized food waste. Number two, they recycled or upcycled repurposed products and items. And number three, they chose products with environment, environmentally friendly packaging or less packaging. So what you're seeing here on the bottom are a bunch of different companies that are upcycling in many different ways. Now, the first one on the left is an actual Upcycled Food Association logo, and this is rolling out the world's first mark certifying upcycled foods. So you'll begin to see this as more companies um, use this type of um, technology and, and innovation to make their products. A company called Swiss company Luya Foods uses okra the byproduct of tofu and soy milk production to create plant-based meat. And then the UK co company called Grounded Foods uses rescued cauliflower and plant-based cheese. And then interestingly enough, air protein and solar foods are actually using greenhouse gases as inputs in their fermentation process. So what you'll see, obviously some of these companies are making use of waste, it'll be interesting to see how these products taste as well as maybe what off notes they may have or other challenges that may be presented. And there was a, a person quoted from the KTU Food Institute that basically was saying meat analogs are the future of food 
both business and science will have to consider the effect of using secondary raw materials, and it will benefit all the parties by reducing costs and saving resources. Science is the key to an efficient shift. And that certainly is the case, um, understanding how to make these types of foods and yet still make them tasty because ultimately consumers want taste. So you can see I got the re I got the information from lots of different sources. Um, but in the end, thank you very much for listening. And we'll be looking at um, additional trends, but it's fun to see what's happening in plant-based because it certainly is a canvas for innovation. Thank you.